Welcome back. Today we'll be talking about ground effects. What is ground effect? Well, it's the increased rotor efficiency and lift that you'll feel when the helicopter is within about one rotor diameter of the ground. Now, what does that look like and why does it work? So, we are talking about ground effect, so we're going to start by drawing the ground. We're going to draw one helicopter here. This helicopter is out of ground effect. We're going to draw one helicopter here that is in ground effect. Now, the helicopter I fly, the Schweitzer 300C, has a rotor diameter of 26 feet 10 inches, so we'll want to be less than that distance from the ground. Just for simplicity, we'll say this guy is hovering at 10 feet, and this guy is hovering at 100 feet. So if you watched the previous lesson, you learned how rotational relative wind and induced flow combine to create the resultant relative wind, which is ultimately what determines angle of attack and lift, right? So as induced flow increases, angle of attack decreases along with lift. So let's look at these two helicopters and see what their induced flow is doing, okay? So in this case, the OGE, the out of ground effect helicopter, is gonna be producing this induced flow that is essentially free to just continue propagating for as long as it's able. Okay, so we're gonna have a very free induced flow and we also have at the rotor tips, these sort of wingtip vortices that, that form out here, it's sort of this swirling pattern that forms out at the edges. Okay. Now, moving over to the IGE, the in-ground effect hover, the induced flow will start, but due to the ground, it's going to be pushed outwards. So it is not allowed to propagate downwards as much as in the case of the out of ground effect helicopter. We still get these wingtip vortices, but they don't build as much either because again, the ground. So you'll notice this effect if you're standing near a helicopter at a hover, this air is getting pushed out in all directions away from the helicopter and you will feel it. If you watched the previous lesson, you're, you've already got a pretty good idea about why we have that increased efficiency here in ground effect. So how does that look? How does it look practically? So let's draw our airfoil here, similar to what we did before. I'm gonna try to draw a less football shaped airfoil compared to last time. I guess that's a little better. And let's compare the resultant relative wind across these two. So we have a given rotational relative wind. And in this case, we'll have two induced flow lines. I'm gonna draw one large induced flow for the outer ground effect. And we'll have a smaller induced flow for the in ground effect helicopter. Now, obviously, the vectors here for in-ground effect for resultant relative wind will be much shallower than the vectors here for the out-of-ground effect. So if you translate both of these vectors back up here, we take this shallow in-ground effect vector and map it out here. We're gonna get one angle of attack. And if we take this very steep out-of-ground effect vector, it'll go here and we'll get separate smaller angle of attack. Now, this is why for the same rotational relative wind, in ground effect, I don't need to pull as much pitch. I don't need to raise the collective as much to get the same amount of lift as I would out of ground effect. Thanks for watching.